good morning everyone and I hope that you are doing really well. I hope you've had a good week, uh, whatever it is that you've been up to. Uh, and this week we're going to be continuing looking at the book of Ephesians together. Uh, and we are really blessed to have Matt looking at Ephesians chapter 3 for us this morning. But as we do by now, you know the drill. Um, first, before we get started, here is a reminder of all of the things that are going on for young people at Southcourt Baptist Church at the moment. Good morning and welcome to this week's SBC Youth News, giving you all of the details about things going on for young people at Southcourt Baptist Church. Here are some of our top stories for you this morning. Don't forget that every Monday our Recharge podcast is going out. Uh, this is just a small podcast designed to help you each week to pause and reflect on your relationship with God and to focus on spending time with him, even if that's only for 10 minutes every week. We really hope and pray that you would feel God so close to you, speaking to you and encouraging you as you listen to those podcasts each week. So that's on Monday afternoons, don't forget about those. Also don't forget on Thursdays from seven till nine, we have our Zoom get togethers. This is open to all young people, whether you go to Edge, Ignite, Youth Cafe, or one of our Sunday morning groups here at church. So don't forget to come and join us on Zoom. This is designed to be a time to play some games, to hang out and catch up with one another. Uh, and some weeks as well, we're having a discussion based around maybe a question that one of you has asked us. Uh, it may be uh, around something going on in the news at the moment, um, which is very important, or something from the Bible together as well as we look and spend time seeing what God would want to say to us. Don't forget that 7 to 9 on a Thursday. Also, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media accounts. We have Facebook pages, Facebook groups, we have an Instagram page, as well as this YouTube channel that you're watching this video on. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date with all of the latest content coming out from SBC Youth. Also, we are looking to put together a small worship group to help us each week as we have these videos. Um, we'd love to get you guys um, sharing your gifts and skills in um, sung worship as we include some of those videos for us to worship along together when we spend these Sunday Youth at Home videos. So if you would like to be involved in that worship group, then please email or contact James, uh, our youth pastor at james at southcourt.org if you want to email him, or you can contact our Instagram, Facebook pages, of course, or whether your parents have got um, my mobile number or an email for me, they can get in contact with me as well. We'd love to have you join us in leading us in some worship um, together. That's it from our news this week, but don't worry, I'll be back at the same time next week to share all of the top news stories for our young people at Southcourt Baptist Church with our SBC Youth News. But that's it from me this morning. Let's move on now to the rest of our content this morning. Goodbye now. Okay, so this is the part of our morning where we do our shuffle challenge together. Uh, as always, you probably know by now, each week we have been taking two of our little shuffle cards uh, and each card is a different challenge and a Bible verse for us to try and do something different uh, as a way of acting out our faith each week. Hopefully you've managed to use last week's challenge as well. Hopefully you've given those a try. Maybe they've stretched you a little bit, challenged you a little bit. That's the whole point after all. Um, but if you, you missed them, this is what last week's challenges were. They were to get political and to look for opportunities for you to get political where maybe you can make your voice heard uh, and maybe where you can try and make a difference. And the second one of our challenges was to try and sit in silence for either three, six or maybe even nine minutes doing literally nothing other than sitting there in silence and seeing maybe what God might want to say. Not about filling that space with words praying to God, but just to sit in silence and hear what he might have had to say. How did you get on with those, I wonder? Uh, hopefully they've been really good challenges for you last week. Um, like I say, hopefully they've challenged you and you found them uh, a good, good to try out. Uh, and here are this week's challenges. So as always, can I have a drum roll, please? 
Uh, and this is what we've got for this week. So the first one is to pray about a broken friendship. There you go, pray about a broken friendship. So it says, uh, there's a Bible verse here from Matthew chapter 6. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And this is the challenge for this week. It says, pray about how to resolve a difficult situation with a friend. You may need to forgive them, and it could be appropriate to contact them. Ask God to help you, and even if it wasn't your fault, make the first move to clear the air with that person. And the extreme version of this challenge is to send or give the person a gift by way of an apology. The prayer for this challenge is, please be present in all of my friendships and relationships, helping me to love others and put them first as Jesus commands. Okay, so that is the first challenge for us this week. Uh, and here comes the second one. Drum roll, please. Okay, this says, ask if you can pray for someone. And the Bible verse for this week says, from John, says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The challenge for this week says, identify a friend who you know is going through some sort of difficulty or is facing a big challenge. They might be injured or be in some sort of trouble or have a big occasion coming up. Ask if you can pray for them, maybe for healing or for a solution or for a good outcome for that thing. The extreme version of this challenge says, don't just pray for them, but ask if you can pray with them. Now that is an extreme version of this challenge. Maybe not so easy to do right now, um, but obviously we can get out and see people. So maybe you could give that one a try as well. Uh, and the prayer for this says, please give me the words, Lord, when I ask my friend if I can pray for them. Such an amazing one that we can try and do. And a great way of sharing our faith with our friends to say, look, I'm praying for you. you know, would you be OK if I pray for you with that thing going on or whatever it might be? Well, there you go. That's this week's shuffle challenges for you. I hope that they're going to be really good for you. As always, we'll put them out on our social medias as well so that you can see them after this video has gone out. Uh, and if, uh, if you have a good experience trying one of those out, why not get in touch with us? Why not share about how it's gone uh, and what you've been getting up to? But uh, that's it. I really hope that they'll be good for you. Um, so we're going to move on now to the, a new part of our Sunday Youth at Home Together mornings. Uh, and we're going to have uh, a brand new thing called Game Time. Okay, welcome everyone to the newest addition to our Sunday Youth at Home videos, uh, Game Time. So each week we will be bringing you a new quick fire fun game for us to play as part of these videos on our Sunday mornings. This week we're going to be starting uh, game time off with a game of Pictionary. Hopefully you've all played Pictionary before. So what's going to happen is Emma Miller is going to be drawing us a few drawings. Uh, and you have to guess as quickly as you can what it is that she's drawing. Okay, and if you, if you get it then why not get in touch with us uh, and give us your answers and see how quickly you can get them. Okay, so if you're ready, here comes the first drawing. Did you guess what it was? Well, well done to any of you if you guessed elephant. Yeah, that's correct. It was in fact an elephant. So well done to those of you that guessed elephant. And now for drawing number two this morning. Get that? Did, did, did I hear someone say ice cream? Yeah, that's right, it was an ice cream. So well done 
if you said ice cream. Well, that's pretty much it for game time this week. Hopefully you got some of those correct. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's just a way of adding some more fun into our mornings together. Something for us to do before we start our discussion each week. Hopefully you can join us again next week for a new, different kind of game in our game time series. But now, before we hand over to Matt, who's going to lead us in discussing Ephesians chapter 3 this morning, here we have, again new for this week, we've got a worship song, which has actually been recorded for us by Miranda and Angel from Ignite. So thank you girls for recording this song, and over to you. Before I start um, our talk on Ephesians chapter 3, as usual, I just want to give you the opportunity to pause the video in a second and read through the chapter yourself. While you're doing that, I want you to look out for shockers and blockers. So shockers being anything that stands out to you in the, in the, cha in the chapter, and blockers being anything that maybe you struggle with or don't quite understand. So now is your time to pause the video, and I'll meet you back here in a couple of seconds to continue with the talk. So, what did you think? Now, if I'm honest, I struggled slightly to, to, to read this chapter and find something that I thought I'd get a whole talk out of. So this might be slightly shorter than usual. But the main thing for me when reading through particularly the first half of the chapter was the talk of this mystery. So Paul mentions a mystery. In, in verse 4, he calls it the mystery of Christ. Now, the Greek word here used in the original writing is mysterion, 
which for me doesn't quite mean what I think a mystery, what I think of as a, as a mystery. So Mysterion is closer to being an unrevealed secret. So something that you will find out soon, but that at the moment you don't know. So that, that's what the mystery here means. And actually, James has already discussed this with you last week. So this mystery is actually that Christ isn't only for Jewish people, that Jesus' teachings and his sacrifices were for all people, non-Jews included, and in the, in the New Testament, non-Jews are called Gentiles. So to us, 2,000 years later, this is no surprise. Um, we've, most of us weren't Jews before we were Christians. Um, it, it, it seems almost alien to us. But at the time, this was a real shock, um, and actually caused Paul quite a few problems. Most of his issues in the New Testament were caused by the anger from people who thought he was going against their traditions and their laws, against the Jewish laws. Um, and many of this was how he treated Gentiles. So to give you a bit of background, um, and I'm going to simplify a lot here, so if you want to find out a bit more, then do a bit of research yourself or read through Acts, and that tells the full story in, in this sense. Um, but at the time, Jewish law meant that entering the house of a Gentile was seen as an unclean act, and so was interacting with Gentiles altogether. So the fact that in the New Testament, Paul was entering the house of Gentiles to share the news of Jesus was quite a shock to those Jewish people around him. Now the reason for this was because at the time, to many people, Christianity was seen as being a sect or an offshoot of Judaism. And in Acts 24, uh, the Christians are actually referred to as being part of the Nazarene sect. So Paul's shaking this up a bit by going in and, and going into the house of the Gentiles and sharing God's word. Um, but he was also converting Gentiles straight to Christianity without them having to effectively become Jews beforehand. So the Council of Jerusalem in 50 AD was a, was a Christian council and it actually concluded that non-Jews could become Christians without needing to keep all the traditions and laws of Moses, so all the Jewish laws. So Paul went around teaching this um, and cited prophets such as Isaiah. Now in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 6 it says, I would also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So here, Back in the Old Testament, Isaiah prophesied that Jesus would be for all people, for Gentiles. He'd be the light to the Gentiles and that that would reach the ends of the earth. It's also worth noting that Paul wasn't the only person in the New Testament that, that received news of this mystery from God. Um, in Acts chapter 11, um, Peter summarises how he received a vision from God, which told him exactly the same thing. Now, as I say, to us 2,000 years later, this isn't much of a shock. If anything, it seems quite trivial. But at the time, it was a real game changer. It was a massive social and religious shift. So Paul's letters, like the letter to, to Ephesus in the Ephesians, um, was him spreading Jesus' teachings to all people and telling them to spread it too, to spread it far and wide and to people of all backgrounds and denominations. The rule book had been changed when God revealed this mystery to Paul. So Paul was now putting these changes into actions. So in verse 12 of Ephesus chapter 3, oh sorry, of Ephesians chapter 3, uh, Paul goes on to tell the Ephesians that they can go and spread God's word, firstly to all people, not just the Jewish people, but also they should go with freedom and confidence. Freedom because when Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was split in two, and we could then have um, personal interactions and a personal relationship with God. So we have the freedom and also the confidence as a group of Christians um, to go and spread the gospel across the world to all people. So this is what Ephesians chapter 3 is about. And this is also what we're called to do. So Ephesians chapter 3 actually ends with a prayer that Paul writes for, for, for the Ephesians. And I actually want to read this to, to end the talk. So it starts like this. This is from verse 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. 
And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Well, hello church. We count it a great privilege to be with you, to worship with you um, and your church. I'm just going to read from John chapter 4, um, 23. Jesus said, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For their Father is seeking such people to worship him. You know, it came after just a moment when the Samaritan woman said, but don't you Jews say you're meant to worship in the temple? Jesus was saying, it doesn't matter where you worship from, it matters about the state of your heart. That's where worship comes from. That's what the Father's looking for. So today, whether you're in a living room, <laughs> whether you're outside, no matter where you are, we just love the fact that we can worship together. We don't need to be in a church building. We are the church. So let's just choose to worship God despite our circumstances. You know, Jesus didn't say to worship in feelings and circumstance, but he said in spirit and in truth. So let's sing together. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you home. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to show Safe to show Safe to show Safe to show All right, here we go In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa -oh. You are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence, in the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Sing this faithfulness, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Through the storm